to the Haunted Hangover Podcast. I'm Dave, and as always, I'm joined by my bud, Lou. Yo. Ha. <laughs> we switch it up on y'all today. People are going to be so confused, Dave. <laughs> That's okay. We got we to gotta spice things up here. So I, uh, this was off the cuff. I wanted to do the intro today. And that's what we're doing. <laughs> so today, we are joined by a very special guest who we had on last year for our first iconic Jack-O-Lanterns episode, and that is Adam from The Great Pumpkin Project. Adam, take it away. What's going on, guys? It's great to be back. I'm glad to be part of that slightly awkward <laughs> intro, but part of history. <laughs> it's funny I don't because... Think it was that awkward. I don't think it was that awkward. It wasn't that awkward at all. It's funny because we've been doing the show now for like a year and a half, and this is the first I've never time. done the intro. Yeah, Dave's never done it the first time. He just broke his intro cherry. That's basically <laughs> what happened. I think I did a good there. job. Give me, cut me a little slack, Adam. No, you you did a phenomenal job, Dave. I was you, saying you it's more awkward virginity. on Lou's end because I don't think he knew what to do. <laughs> no, none. I had, I'm so uh, just. To, <laughs> I'm so used to opening the show up and introducing it that uh, I was a little thrown off there. Dave, I know. So. <laughs> I'm, only, I'm I'm only messing around, but uh, it is a pleasure to have brilliant. you back on the show. Thank you. You're welcome. So, so Adam, t- talk a little bit briefly because you were on the show, like Dave just said, previously last year, it, almost a year to the date, I believe. I believe it was the twentieth August. Yeah, there you go. So, almost a few days shy, yeah, of the time of this recording, you were on the show. And if you haven't mm. listened to that episode, definitely go back because, I, if I remember correctly, we talk about the Great Pumpkin Project, and we even talk about the history of the Jack O' Lantern. In my own crazy way, I explained it. So, <laughs> yep. but yeah, Adam, t- r- tell us a little bit about the Great Pumpkin Project, just in case someone didn't listen to that previous episode. Well, since Shame somebody might have been slacking and didn't <laughs> exactly. pay attention to the prior episode, if I have to repeat myself, so the Great Pumpkin Project is something uh, seven years old now, um, 31 wow. nights or days of uh, carved jack-o'-lanterns put in random spots, creepy spots, place that needs Halloween spirit, stuff like that. Um, And on each one of those jack-o'-lanterns, a tag is put on by a different artist every year. And it is meant to spread the joy of the holiday and get people involved. You know, it's kind of like a small um, art project. We've had people from almost every state now, some internationally, uh, participate and it's been growing and growing we're on year seven and uh it's, it's a labor of love to say the least <laughs> it's it's funny you we it, love you, it. you you we do love it you inspired uh a tom <laughs> our friend tom who tommy knuckles who, tommy blood. knuckles tommy, tommy valley. valley tommy so. two-tone tommy nutcracker tommy ball and chain tommy, tommy walnuts i can't even Tommy steal your girl. <laughs> Can't forget that one. Tommy steal your girl. I love Tom. We love you, Tommy Valley. Yeah, and and Tom Tom's been you know he's been uh uh, uh he's been recording the uh, mini sods, which is a new thing we've been doing. He's been joining me in those. But yeah, you you inspired him to uh, carve thirty one jack o' lanterns last year, and he told me last night that he's doing it again. So. Bravo, sir. You're getting tons of people, including Tom, to do this. So <laughs> You know what? It's it's stressful for me because it makes it makes me not slack. You know, yeah. between him and there's a uh, lady in Texas um, who does it as well. And it's like, oh, you can't take a night off. You're done with work at like 9 p.m. And you're like, yeah. okay, got to got to wait and find a way to get out there. So, yeah, I don't have an excuse now. It's funny because I think I was, uh, I don't know if Dave was there or not, but I, I, you might have been Dave. I was over at Tom's place one night and he had like four pumpkins just in his kitchen sitting there. <laughs> and then he had like his little table set up with an X-Acto knife. <laughs> you might I know what you're there. talking about. Yeah. I don't think I was there with you, but no. I do know what you're talking about because I've seen it. Is this like recently? already no no this was last last october okay. no he's excited <laughs> yeah. i'm sure he's excited for it he is he's super excited and another fun little story from last year with tom and dave and i and our buddy chris who's also been on the show 
Uh, we went to a haunted attraction last year, and Tom actually brought the pumpkin for that night with him. And we got a bunch of like cool pictures of it at the haunt. There's actually pictures of Dave and I. Oh yeah, I've posted <laughs> up on like Haunted Hangovers Instagram of us with that jack o' lantern. So he did try to take, you know, he he'd take these uh, jack o' lanterns to interesting locations, and that was a pretty it, the pumpkin like that pumpkin that jack o' lantern looked great at that haunt because the lighting was. Cool. I mean, remember Dave? Dave did. <laughs> I think I remember yeah, those pictures specifically. Yeah, I remember seeing a bunch at bars. <laughs> Yes. like posing with random people so yes. i can totally respect kind of how he's doing it and uh mm-hmm. you know he's getting them out there so yeah, he, he also he also brought i remember uh my mother we've talked about it on the show my mother had a halloween party last year pretty mm-hmm. pretty big halloween party and i told i told tom i said hey what are you carving f- like for halloween day on the 31st and he had no clue and i was like dude just carve the original Halloween jack o' lantern, which I know you hate, Adam. Yeah, my <laughs> so, favorite. It's funny because I have pictures of that jack o' lantern at the party. Like it was, just, it was cool to just have yeah. the pumpkin in the background lit up. You know, the jack o' lantern was just all lit up in the background, and it was the original Halloween. He made the he cut that weird, awkward slit in it, and all that. So you know, <laughs> I, I will say this though he he definitely went more artistic. That I'm yes. used to, you know, it's just like get the face on there. But he was carving, I think, like spirals and different yeah. logos. So props to him. He's, you know, I'm just like triangles and teeth. Here we go. Tom, we love your uh, your, your your pumpkin we carving. Love you, Tommy Valley. We love you yeah, and we love out. your your pumpkin carving uh, capability. Shout out to Tommy All Valley Tournament right there. I, I have another funny story. Speaking of carving, so I cannot carve a jack-o'-lantern for the life of me like i'm really bad at carving jack-o'-lanterns i'm not i I could i can edit other shit movies podcasts videos all that stuff but i cannot carve a jack-o'-lantern and last year and adam you might remember i know dave probably remembers because you were with me that night for sure dave uh my girlfriend andrea i gotta give her a shout out she carved a haunted hangover jack-o'-lantern with like the the drinking ghost and all that in it. Do you remember that, Adam? I remember. Much? I do remember. Yeah, and I shot a, a very short, you know, little atmospheric video oh, yeah. for it. Dave's music was in it. I shot it, edited it. Wait, well, wait yes. a second. Hold on. You're forgetting. Something. What am I forgetting? We left. We left Tommy Valley's area mm-hmm. to do yes. that. So we were with Tom. We were, and that might have been the <laughs> night I'm talking about where I saw the carving tools and a all the pumpkins. Oh, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, and we yeah. also took a picture with that jack-o'-lantern. But yeah, my, my girlfriend was able to carve the ghost holding the drink in the pumpkin. If I had to do that, I would have gone through like four pumpkins because you I would know have what? fucked it up. <laughs> you've, you've, just made, you've just made a commitment. Yes. So <laughs> what I expect of you now is for you to carve that. Who cares how bad it looks? Damn, I just want to see your interpretation of it. <laughs> Our 2021 uh, Haunted Hangover Jack-O-Lantern will be uh, really ugly this year then, I guess, when I, uh, Done. I have to carve it. So we shall see. <laughs> now, Dave, I know you had a couple of questions you wanted to ask Adam this year, right? Absolutely. So those tags that you, I know you do tags every year. The ones from last year were really good. I'm very curious if you, uh, what you have in store for this year with the tags, or is it too early to say? Uh, no, actually, I don't mind saying. So um, last year's tags were done by uh, Jesse Hardesty. Um, they will be available on the great pumpkin project.com to print out so you can make your own probably middle of september something like that and then this year i'm having an artist sam dunn do the work uh she's from england i believe if i'm wrong apologies (laughs) um but great stuff i usually put them out uh late september just to kind of reveal the work so yeah sticking with it you know given really talented halloween artists a small bit of recognition that i probably <laughs> can't awesome. help with but, i love you know. it i love it it's awesome dude yeah the whole concept and, we, and again we're probably being redundant now but the whole concept is really cool it is it is again, i appreciate it you've inspired people even one of our own tom again you inspired him to do it so you gotta you gotta give yourself a pat on the back dude it is Listen, a cool concept man the tags that 
uh, I know you had sent a couple to Louis. Louis gave me yeah. um, one mm-hmm. or two. I use the tags as bookmarks. Well, that that works. You know, who wants a big, bulky bookmark anyway? A nice, small, compact, Halloween-related bookmark. I, I approve. Thank you much. And let, and let me just clarify. I do when I did the few I, I didn't I only carved a few jack o' lanterns. I did use them, but when I took them back, I used them as bookmarks. Oh no no no. I oh I'm aware okay. and I appreciate that. I mean even if people <laughs> forget sure. it's it's fine. It's just an extra kind of you know, thing to know that you're part of some kind of movement or project, whatever, but you know, awesome. I don't get offended. <laughs> Well, I have mine right here on my desk, so I'm looking right at Look them at that. right there. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> but yeah, let, let, let's jump into the uh, to the topic. Sure, sure. T- t- today that we're going to be talking about because I feel like we'll be talking all night about jack o' lanterns. We'll never get to. Uh, <laughs> what, what we're, well, we what technically we love are jack-o-lanterns talking here. about jack o' lanterns, <laughs> which is funny because yeah, we are going to be talking about jack o' lanterns. But I'm, I'm going to be honest, the, the jack o' lanterns were we all picked are characters yep. and aren't technically what you would consider just like a plain old jack-o'-lantern or pumpkin. Very, very different picks. I, I do like how he accidentally went with that theme too. <laughs> yeah, this wasn't planned. <laughs> because I chose my pick, then then Dave chose his, and then Adam, you were like, oh, this is what I'm going to go with. And I was like, interesting, just how we all picked very similar. They are all, all three of them are very similar when the listeners – hear us talking about them in a second you're gonna be like ah i see what they i see what they did there yep. and i don't even know if you guys are aware of what what we kind of did and if not i'll i'll mention it at the end when we get to it when we get through all all uh three picks okay but yeah adam since since you're since you're our guest hit dave and i with your first pick didn't actually think you could keep some in the spirit of Halloween locked up forever. Did you, Ghostbuster? Well, yeah, actually we did. Then you are fools, and fools deserve a swift demise. Tonight, I shall bring about Halloween eternal. All right, so I kind of felt bad because I know you've had a whole episode kind of a dedicated to this guy but i picked sam hayne the um character from real ghostbusters season one episode eight um if you are not familiar with the character we're talking about a pumpkin-headed ghost <clears throat> with a giant cloak and a uh, really terrible looking face to be honest with you um <laughs> The character himself was actually voiced by a actor, William E. Martin, who, if you don't know, replaced Uncle Phil from The Fresh Prince, James Avery, uh, as Shredder in Ninja Turtles, the oh, cartoon wow. as well. I didn't know that. Uh, so he was also, it's listed he was the model for Harry and the Hendersons, I guess, the Bigfoot. So, but I hmm. found that in my research. Um, so to kind of, sum up who he is uh he's a spirit that's released from an ancient tomb that arrives in new york from ireland on halloween uh again he's a pumpkin headed figure and he's constantly wheezing he has a very (laughs) interesting sounding voice uh my initial comparison is kind of he sounds like mary uh marianne faithful in the Metallica Memory Remains video at the end. <laughs> That's it's a good like, reference. <laughs> it just kind of sounds like like a like a old waitress at a diner and like, what do you yes. have, sweetie? <laughs> yeah. But it's a cross between that and like Bane. So that's kind yeah. of half of what makes him a little a little creepy to me. Um and he technically is Halloween. That's what he yes. says at least. Uh, he comes back and try to stop time to make Halloween last forever, which I'm sure none of us would have a problem with. Nope. <laughs> um, and nope. he's there to summon other ghosts, including Slimer, as he calls them, his little ones, to join him in eternal Halloween. Um, a one thing I'd like to point out, which is amazing, as soon as he's released from his tomb or whatever it is, kind of looks like a grandfather clock. There is a really good 
80s disco funk a la <laughs> yeah. like Sheila E soundtrack that plays as soon as they let him go. Um, yeah. That's just, you know. And he's also released from that tomb by a goblin that looks like a Mayan warrior. <laughs> yeah. And he draws an infinity <laughs> symbol on that uh, tomb. So he's very basic. It's a fun episode. Oh, it's a great episode. He actually makes another appearance if I remember correctly. I was I was trying to think if I was imagining that or that was the case that he's in a second one. He does return. We haven't covered that episode yet, and I'm sure I'm sure we will. But he is he's such a popular character mm. that I'm surprised they've never like brought him into like a live action like brought him into one of the live action movies like even in a cameo like when you think about it like ghostbusters 2 came out a few years after this you would think like they'd have a little you know that would be cool little uh, cameo like a little, from like a little him, easter egg yeah. Right? yeah 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 uh-huh. like it's it's just it's just i'm just surprised because when you look now there's so many like there's toys of him art of him you know, he is really That's popular. What I was Maybe ask. in the Is there a yeah. figure? Is there an action figure of him? I think I so. I own one. Yeah, I own one and it, what it is is it's like it's not like an action figure. They're almost like dolls. They're they almost look like Barbies. <laughs> That's my best way of <laughs> comparing okay. them. Louis and Sam it's him, Barbie. It's it's Sam Hain and Janine wearing the Ghostbusters uniform and That's it's like cool. inside of like a recreation of the firehouse. So okay. he's and I've seen people with like tattoos of him like he honestly next to like Stay Puft and Slimer. He's probably like the third or fourth like uh, ghost from the animated series. That's like really popular. The only other one I can think right. of is the Boogeyman. That's the what I was going to say. Yeah. I actually yeah. have it in my notes. I was like the two most <laughs> memorable characters in real Ghostbusters as far as ghosts go are him and the Boogeyman. And they're actually probably two of the most creepy, in my opinion. They're like the darkest episodes. Mm-hmm. That Boogeyman episode is very dark. But so is the, ho- the ho- what is it? When Halloween was forever, right? Or, or I think that's yep. the name. Yes. That's the title. That, that, that episode, too, just what he wants to do to the world is <laughs> kind of it's basically armageddon in his eyes mm. at least bringing all the uh the ghouls and goblins back from the so, dead i know <laughs> i said this on the podcast when we actually covered the podcast uh, on the podcast but all those ghouls and ghosts and monsters that are that are with sam hayne they all just look like new york hardcore like drawn characters <laughs> that you would yeah. see in like you know, like that you would see like a maybe in like a bull, like yeah, like a mad ball cover, like a bulldoze fucking flyer yeah. or something. Like Vinny you, it's just in really there funny. Yeah, like I just love it. And I I love at the end when like they're I don't know what to call it, but they're in that trap you know, the thing what, what's it called that they put all the ghosts unit. in? Right, there the we containment go. Containment unit. And you yeah. see and you see Sam Hain just looking real sad and bummed in the background, just <laughs> sitting on a floating rock. It's, it's hysterical. That's one of the that's one of the best shots in that <laughs> in that episode. Yeah. It's just him. This is also the one where, like, uh, if I remember correctly, Slimer gets all like possessed and shit, right? Or not possessed? Yeah, but he, Sam he, Hain keeps like dragging him away or something. Yep. It's kind of fucked up. One thing I will say though, if you want to talk about him aesthetically as a jack o' lantern, it's pretty weird. He's got like a human mouth with like red lips and chiclet teeth. Yeah. Um, and the actual shape of the jack o' lantern uh, is kind of like tomato wish. You know, I agree. Like, it does. I love it the character, like a but I think more of a tomato, if anything. <laughs> he has no nose, right? I, if I it's remember, it's like no. Oh, it's small. I think, yeah, it's very, and his eyes are tiny. It's a cool design. I, I get what you're saying. He does look more like a tomato than he does a jack o' lantern. But it's still a cool, like the concept of him, like basically being the spirit of Halloween, which is going to be a theme tonight for, I think, all of our picks, technically. Mm -hmm. Um, But he's definitely up there as one of the few characters that that embodies that. I can't think of too many other ones that are not on our on our like that are not in our picks tonight that resemble what he's trying to do to end to, to, to end the world and make Halloween forever, yada, yada. You know, I'm I'm surprised that there's not like an actual action figure. You know what I mean? Like a plastic action figure or like a 
soft vinyl figure of that character because that would make a killing. I'd buy one. I would too. I don't remember if he had one. In the original line of real Ghostbusters toys, he must have. He was so fucking. I rem, I always remembered him. Like, whenever I think of that show, I always remember of that character. Yeah, you would so, think you would think it was a toy, especially since they're re-releasing him. That they might as well make one now. Yeah, you would think. Yeah, of course. So I'm gonna go off on a tangent right here for a second. I mean, I, I'm it, sure yeah. our listeners are not surprised by this. <laughs> um. So there is a very well-known toy world, which which is the collectible collectible excuse me there collectible world of vinyl figures, and uh, there is one guy, um, Mutant Vinyl Hardcore, who is very well known, very sought after with making these soft vinyl toys, and he had I, I'm pretty sure he I, I'm not sure about how how often he puts them into circulation, but I do have one, and I will send a picture to Louis so he can post it up on the um, podcast, on the Instagram podcast. Um, is called Sam Hanus, and it's basically <laughs> like, like this. It's it's a demon, and it's got like a really decrepit jack o' lantern head, and it's just it's. So this is called a blank, and it's just neon pink, and it's fucking awesome. And uh, I remember, That's I remember cool. getting it at uh, at one of. Uh, one of the New York City Comic Cons. And at the time, he was just selling them out of his backpack. And they were, like, super sought after. And I remember I met him at the entrance, and I got one. And I got the little Sam Hanus head that he had a razor blade. Uh, he put he put a razor blade, like a real sharp <laughs> razor blade in it. And um, it just reminded me of it. Because fucking jack-o'-lantern toys are fucking cool. We need they more. Are. <laughs> they are. We do You're need right. more. <laughs> I, I want to go off one more tangent. Speaking Please. of real Ghostbusters, speaking of real Ghostbusters and toys, I recently bought the uh, the re-release of what is it? I'm looking right at it, the Ghost Popper. Yep, I saw it in <laughs> Target or something the other day. Yeah, I bought it and I and I bought it for a haunted hangover like cocktail video. I made like an ecto coolerita like uh. like a uh, cocktail video, and I had Howard shoot shoot it off in the video and shoot at some like stay puff toys and shit it's pretty cool it's almost identical to the original uh po- ghost popper the only thing only difference is it's blue not black i guess to not make it look like a real gun i guess, I guess. yeah I don't, that makes you, sense. I don't know how you confuse the two though because it obviously looks like a fucking toy well here i know you guys can see it or not but here you go that's this is, right uh, that is awesome. this is this sin- this is the Sam Hanus. It's fuck. It's one of my like. Thing, it will always be on display wherever I am. Like my, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Anywhere I live, it will always be on display. So there you go. I think I think I've seen it. It's next to your like hats and stuff, right? Like I think, yeah, I think I've yeah. seen it before. But there's a yeah, there's yeah, yeah. ton there's tons of Sam Hanuses like different colors. Like they put the head on different bodies and whatnot. It's it's a whole niche yeah. thing. It's awesome. I just figured I'd mention it because, like I said. Jack o' lantern toys, especially evil jack o' lantern toys, are, are pretty great. When are we gonna get a decent looking Vigo figure? Yeah, surprise. Everything I'm surprised. Everything they put out looks yeah. awful. Wait, does he have figures? I've never yeah, seen there's... one. I didn't. I didn't know he had one. There's, oh, I think three. I, wow. I have to look those up. I had no. Yeah, I had no. They don't clue. look like him at all. And if you want to read something really <laughs> disturbing, there's an article about the real life of the actor who played him. Oh yeah, and it's awful. Yep. yep. <laughs> he he kind of looked like a piece of shit. That actor. Yeah. He no, like he... it, it follows through. <laughs> yeah. If you look up pictures of of the actor, they're very eerie. Like if you mm. see him, he has a very very strange energy energy to him that I could at least tell just by looking at the pictures. Damn, he really was Vigo. He really, yep. he really was that. <laughs> he really was that character. Oh man, I, I'm gonna have to do some research later. Later, I had no idea that the dude was like yep. corrupt and. I'll find the article. Shit. I'll send it to you. Oh yeah, send that to me. I'm, I'm, I'm curious now. All right, you yellow rat bastards. I don't care how long it takes me. I'll find you. I'll make your parents pay. A little bit for trick or treating, aren't you, Bucko? Keeping on track with evil jack o' lanterns, I chose 1995's 
Jacko from the movie Jacko. <laughs> Directed by I don't mean Steve to laugh, Latua. Dave. That's okay. It's funny. <laughs> It is. A, it's, this movie by, is hilarious. I love it. It's one of my favorites. No, I do people, too. Listen, I, I, it's I got a too. divide. People hate it and people love it. I love it. I've always loved it. It's yeah. a lot of fun to watch. It, it, listen, if you've never seen Jacko, it's probably like, I thought it was free on Prime Video, but it's like $2 or something like that. It's so worth it. And I, I, I have a VHS tape of it. It's a, That's not an easy tape to find, but um, I... And that's how I saw it was on VHS. Go ahead, Adam. I've never seen it. I've seen the the box a billion times, but I've never watched it. And I haven't seen it in full yet. But after watching the trailer you sent, I need to watch this. Yeah, um, it's 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 pretty wonderful. So Which one of you described it as like an hour and a half Are You Afraid of the Dark episode? Because from what would, I got from the would, trailer, that was perfect. <laughs> that would be me. Um, yeah. It's exactly what it is. So, again, this was directed by Steve Latshaw. It was released as a straight-to-video TV release in 1995. So I'm not going to go into this that much because I have a feeling we're going to cover this movie down the line because it does it it takes place during and on halloween so during halloween time and actually on halloween so here's my brief synopsis of the film long ago a wizard who was hung by townspeople on halloween conjures a demon named jacko to curse the town jacko was killed and buried by a member of the kelly family and decades later a bunch of teens fucking around in the woods stumble upon Jacko's grave and let it loose. Jacko is hell-bent on revenge and goes on a killing spree on Halloween. The only one who could stop Jacko is Sean, a descendant of the Kelly family. Toss in real strong vaporwave aesthetics, big atmosphere, Cinemax stylings, a dad determined to make the sickest haunted house in his garage, add in some fun (laughs) gore and Linnea Quigley, and we have Jacko. And like Adam was saying, it honestly reminds me of an hour and a half R-rated version of an Are You Afraid of the Dark episode. I really love this movie. There's also like a a very, very long, uh, I'm trying to think of the word I want to use, a very long gratuitous shower scene of Linnea Quigley just naked and (laughs) it's super long. It's, you know, it's, I guess it's to be expected with Linnea Quigley, but, um, and she's one of the best parts of this film. Like I said, I'm not going to get into the film. But Jacko is an evil fucking jack-o'-lantern who wants to kill everybody. <laughs> and Jacko essentially looks like a scarecrow with a jack-o'-lantern for a head. And it has like a red yellowish glow that fills its eyes, nose, and uh, mouth. And it has a huge scythe. And he's tall, or I don't want to say he, I don't know what it is. But it is tall as fuck too. So... That's Jacko. I, to, I'm going to be honest with you because you made the Are You Afraid of the Dark comparison. As soon as you told me there's sure. like a long nude scene, I'm like, but right in my head, I'm thinking, but but isn't it for kids? <laughs> not with well, Linnea Quigley. Said, really not. That's why I said R rated Are You Afraid of the Dark. Mm, that'll do it. <laughs> right. I do want to say, like, like Jacko he's not scary looking at all in this like he's not intimidating when you watch this menacing i think it's menacing looking he's <laughs> it's tall as fuck <laughs> you know what he reminds me of he reminds me of like a character you would see at like disney world like you can tell it's a dude wearing like a big fake head like it looks like like a character you would see like you take away I'm, the evil the evil aspect like the glowing eyes right. and like his his scythe or whatever he just he looks like a like a pumpkin man like hey what's you going know what, on kids you know it's funny you just said that there's a line in the movie where the little kid is trying to kill Jacko and he goes come and get me pumpkin man and I yeah. swear it's hysterical <laughs> so you know what Jacko reminds me of too it reminds me of a character you'd see in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers it remi- you know yes. what I'm saying like you know how they had like there is those- a character yeah right it's it it's mm-hmm. totally could be in that world. The characters in in Power Rangers were always kind of big and dumb, so I can yeah, see where yeah. you're getting that from. There is yeah. a character I, I forget his name, and and they actually released a toy of him recently, 
and he has a he, he's orange he has a jack-o'-lantern on his head but i believe the jack-o'-lantern is upside down if i remember correctly and he's like the yes. villain and i think he did he did something to the putties where they have pumpkins or some shit too it's been a while since i've watched this episode of power Rangers, i gotta watch but, that i love it you know what jacko 100 percent reminds me of that power rangers yeah. villain well, um, definitely. There's a, <laughs> I know we're not talking about the movie too much, but there is one thing I want to add. Two things, actually. Please. The first, the the first thing is, and this is gonna deviate from from Jacko the character, but since we just did our Friday the Thirteenth special, that kid wears a bootleg Jason mask. There's that yes, kid. Yes, he even, does. He's wearing one in in the movie. Mm-hmm. And second, this is the only movie I could think of. Where somebody accidentally kills themselves with a toaster. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the most um, <laughs> accidentally kill. Right, she kills herself. Yeah. Uh, sorry, spoiler, yep. spoiler warning. But she accidentally kills herself. All right, with all right. A toaster. We have to go into. All right, so the, look, there's <laughs> go no into this turning one back scene. at this. There, there's no turning back in, on this right now. Okay, <laughs> there is a scene where there's a really uptight couple on Halloween night watching TV. And they hear noise, and the guy's like, get off my property, and they go back inside, he ends up getting killed, and then the wife is cutting toast in, like, <laughs> like just, pe- like, okay, like, usually you, you cut toast, you put butter, jelly, whatever you put on it, you cut it in half. She's cutting strips of toast, like, like, separate yeah. little, <laughs> little sheets of toast. I've never seen that before. So... She goes outside, and I could be, I could have this part wrong, but then she goes back inside, and she's got a fork in her hand or a knife in her hand, and she slips, and she fucking falls yes. with her hand in the fork into the toaster and electrocutes it's herself. So, it's so dumb. And then she's, like, getting zapped for, like, a minute yeah, straight and silly. turns into a skeleton. It's so dumb. But it's the only movie I can think of that some – like, Jacko doesn't even kill her. She kills no, herself. Know, with a toaster. We might have to do Jacko. The next episode might have to be Jacko. I mean, this is... Yeah, we're going <laughs> we're to have to do Jacko we're, very we're, soon because... We're definitely doing it's... Jacko. This movie's, this movie's a lot of fun. It definitely captures a Halloween spirit, too. It's, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fun one. I have a question about it because I only saw the trailer, but does its face move at all in the entire thing? I think so. Yes. I think it okay. does have a little movement to it. Yes. Um, and and, and it, it has a really cool effect where it does have like a like a gradient light to it like it you could see yeah. oranges and reds and yellows in it so it, and, and it's it's cool looking i mean it really is a cool looking character um you know it's silly if you can appreciate silly shit and and look past it and just have fun with it this is why jacko is a great movie it, it does have a really cool cover too like i remember seeing that cover a ton back in the day in the video store with Jacko on it, right? It's yeah. like him with his like scythe or sickle or whatever it is, and yeah, he's it's just like sitting standing there. over the like his it's his it's like his body over the town where they are. I think it's I think the movie was shot mm. in Florida, but um, you know, it's definitely it's, a good way to sell it. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> definitely similar. You know, what movie it's very similar to. It's very similar to Pumpkinhead, and which is funny yeah. because I was gonna say that's that's your last year's pick exactly and i did not even really make the you know the parallel to that and i was like you know what this is super similar to pumpkin head which was my last year thing but besides the point um jacko is worth the watch look up jacko if you've never seen what jacko looks like that would be another cool really cool fucking halloween costume to be honest with you so jacko you get two thumbs up from me bud believe it or not i was just like you when i was a kid and my dad sent me straight to this. See, my dad taught me tonight is about respecting the dead. Because this is the one night that the dead and all sorts of other things roam free <laughs> and pay us a visit. Sorry. All these traditions, jack-o'-lanterns, putting on costumes, handing out treats, they were started to protect us, but nowadays, no one really cares. So my pick is Sam from the 2007 film Trick or Treat, directed by Michael Daughtry. 
Now, now when it comes to Trick or Treat, that's a very popular Halloween movie. And surprisingly, Dave and I have we've we don't really talk about Trick or Treat. I think it's nope. come up maybe like once for some. Yeah. And I I I love the movie personally. Like I think it's a no, great it's, great movie. It's good, well made. Um, but it, I just find it funny how we never mention Trick or Treat. It's probably up there with one of the most popular. It's got to be like one of the most popular Halloween movies to come out in the last. 10 years no it's, it's over 10 years older it came out in 2007 so yeah right. last 20 years it's got well, it was be. also shell it it, it it was made before yeah. 2007 it was shelled yeah for a bit. now this is a movie that lived up to the hype it got before it came out because totally they hyped agree. the totally. hell out of it and i was very very pleased when i saw it because i think i think we all were because it is, it oh, is yeah, a dude. very good very good uh movie Fun story. I went to Fangoria had a, an event here in New York City. I think it might have been at Jacob Javits Center, if I remember. This was a very long time ago. Um, and I remember going, and Michael uh, Daughtry was there, and they were handing out posters, you know, trick-or-treat posters, and he was signing mm-hmm. them. And this is before he was, like, big time. Because I think before this, he was, like, the writer on some, like, X-Men movies. Mm -hmm. And I remember them advertising it, pushing it. They screened the trailer. I watched the trailer. It was easy to get into the rooms because, you know, how Comic-Con and shit is now. It's hard to get into Mm -hmm. those panels. This was, like, the easiest thing. They showed it. Yeah, it's impossible. But I saw the trailer, and I remember being like, wow, this movie is amazing. And then two it took two years, I believe, if I remember correctly, for me to finally see it. And I remember I went to a screening of it, I think. I think. And then I bought it on Blu-ray, if I remember correctly. And I was just... I, I, I fell in love with it right away. And, and I honestly... I, I still think, uh, to this day, it's one it, it's one of the best Halloween movies when it comes to atmosphere. And, I agree. And just the writing, mm-hmm. the acting, the music, the characters, the gore, the everything about it is is perfect. And I know they've been talking about making a sequel to it for years, but I, I don't think it needs one. It doesn't keep need it. it. No, it doesn't. Keep it. No. I, I think if they make a second one, it's going to fuck things up. <laughs> that's what I think. is. That, I think that, that's exactly what's going to happen. But let me let, – we're, we're, we're doing our tangent talking about Trick or Treat once again, just like Jacko, I'm sure – because I haven't watched it yes. in a while, but I'm sure Neither have I. we're gonna cover we're gonna cover it on the podcast. We have to. There, there are two films that are, and, and now Jacko three movies, and one of them I've mentioned several times that we haven't covered. That's The Guest, which is another great Halloween movie. That's probably to me personally the only other Halloween film that can go toe to toe with Trick or Treat because I fucking love The Guest. And then Trick or Treat and Jackal. Those are the three. Those. I need to revisit that more than I have to revisit Trick or Treat. Yeah, well, yeah, the guest is fucking awesome. So, so those will be coming soon. The the Haunted Hangover sure. podcast episodes of those movies will come eventually. But yeah, if you if you're unfamiliar with Trick or Treat, and more than likely you're not, here's my little uh, synopsis. So, Trick or Treat is a Halloween themed anthology film made up of four different stories that are interwoven. These tales involve everything from serial killers to werewolves. But the main thing they all have in common is the character of Sam popping up in all of them. And in one of the stories in particular, it's, it's his story. It's dedicated to him. So I, I always compared the character of Sam to like the Crypt Keeper. K- kind of. Very loose. In the sense that, that he, he's kind of, he's the glue bringing all the stories together because he doesn't speak. So it's not like he's introducing, introducing each segment. He just kind of pops in and out like at the ass end of each one. He bookends them, you know? And I I loved how they were able to put this character in the film and give him that role without saying like shitty one liners and stuff like that. Because most anthology films have that, for the most part. And I love anthology films, but like something like Creep Show that has the creep, you know, in the second one specifically, because there's no real creep in the first one. It's more just the comic. But it's a really smart way of, you know, connecting stories 
without it being so obvious, like different chapters in the same sure. movie, you know? Mm -hmm. Now, the, the, the character of Sam was actually introduced, and I believe it was 1996, in this animated short film called Season's Greeting, Season's Greetings, which was also directed by Michael Daughtry. I believe it was like his first film. So yeah, he 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 was he was he was holding off on this movie for a very long time and this character, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. Now here's my description of Sam. He's a child-sized jack-o'-lantern demon wearing an orange pajama-like onesie and yep. a homemade burlap sack mask which covers his monstrous skull-shaped pumpkin head <laughs> because yep. he's technically a demonic jack-o'-lantern or also similar to Sam Hain, that's why his name is Sam, Adam's pick, he is like the spirit of Halloween, which is what I love about this character, Sam. So, quick take. Mm -hmm. If you were to take Sam, Sam Hain, and Jacko. And put mm -hmm. them in a ring. Who's gonna win? I, I think we should save that for the end. I think we should. <laughs> I think we should. I think. Right, I think. Okay. You know what? Okay. We're gonna get so back to that. I just laid question. it out for everybody. I laid it out for everybody. So here we go. Go we're ahead. Get, Continue. We're gonna get back to that question. So yeah. So 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 Sam's whole thing is he's obsessed with you know with with these Halloween rules. He's he's the spirit of Halloween again. And uh, the rules have kind of changed between like what's in the movie. Again, I haven't watched the movie in a while and like what's on merch. So this is this. These are the rules I have in my notes. Basically, always give candy to trick or treaters. Always wear a costume. Never blow out a jack-o'-lantern before midnight. Respect the dead. I also think in certain iterations, there's like check your candy because Sam uses razor blades and chocolate bars and shit to hurt people and to, and to, well, to hurt <laughs> shitty people, which is, which is his thing. Now, now what's, what's cool about this character. And again, going back to like the movie being delayed and just him, you know, his presence in the film and what the film turned into, which is this big cult thing. Dude, there is a ton of merch. I'm talking like nightmare oh, dude, before it's... Christmas level like levels of merch on this guy yeah, they've got like, fucking toys there. costumes blankets halloween decorations mugs everything there was even a haunted house at universal studios dedicated like a trick-or-treat house I love dedicated it. specifically to him mostly because he's popping in and out of every scene you just see sam running at you with a razor blade chocolate bar I was going to say, as we speak, I literally have the Sam Funko Pop on my desk here um, <laughs> with an eye shot. They have, like, they put out a few comics and like a, an actual um, yes. like hardcover book. Got those. So I'm guilty. We have like the uh, the door greeter from Spirit Halloween. We got a, a bunch of stuff. But I'm so glad it's kind of become a thing from a movie that kind of got shelved. You know, yeah. it was like you guys where it's like you waiting for this thing to come out. And the first time I saw it is when I went and bought the DVD. So to see it kind of gain, you know, him gain momentum and kind of become like a newer icon of the holiday. It's it's an awesome thing to see. Yeah, Absolutely. I totally agree. And, and and I and I have the graphic novels. I have some stuff here, too. I don't I don't I don't have the, the Funko Pop. I think I wanted it because I'm not a Funko Pop collector. I have a few, very few, like four. Yeah, me too. But but I did want him, but I never got my hands on him. But I have his comic. I have another figure of him somewhere. I always like the design of the character. Like, I think there's something very old about him, which I think is the point. Like, he's supposed to look like he's from some other time, you know? And then the fact that they make him look like a kid. And, right. you don't, and in, the, in the film, you think he's a kid. You don't know what he looks like until the very end. That I don't want to get into the last segment with him because... Again, Dave and I will probably cover the movie down the line, but just the concept of him being like this evil, like this, this evil, not evil, because he's technically not bad. He's hurting bad people, but this spirit of Halloween in the form of a like trick or treater is creepy and cool, you know? Yeah. You know, I remember reading about it in whatever magazines, you know, Fangoria, Horror Hound, Rue Morgue, 
And I remember like being hyped up to see this movie. And I remember when it got its release, I went right out to the store to get it. It was a thing. You know what I mean? Like people were mm-hmm. out there wanting to get that movie. Like like I said, it really did live up to its hype. And um it, it's just it, it it's it really is on the level. I would I have to agree with you. It is on the level of Nightmare Before Christmas. It's like and honestly, it 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 was shelved for a reason and showed and was released for a reason when it when it was because I feel like that was the time that movie was supposed to come out. Yeah, the the best thing about <clears throat> sorry, the best thing about the movie in general is it's kind of like Halloween's a Christmas story. A Christmas story is my all time favorite yeah. movie. Even being like a Halloween person, Trick or Treat is Halloween's Christmas story. I could see you know, that. They could like play that, that twenty four hours, and everybody would sit there and watch it. I also want to add, and I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but Sam popped up in these like short promo bumpers with him celebrating other holidays like Christmas and Easter. But like with a morbid twist. Are either one of you familiar with that or no? Nope. They were on FearNet, right? Yes, yes. That's, I was yep. about to say they were on FearNet, which I don't think exists anymore, right? They closed that down a while ago, right? Uh, yeah, I think it was. Um, what's 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 the other one now? Thirteen. Shutter is is the. Shutter. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They 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 did. Like, I think you mentioned it, right? Like a twenty-four hour trick or treat marathon. And that's like, where I got it from because I'm pretty sure that's that's what those bumpers were for. They did like back to school and all that stuff. Easter, Christmas, mm-hmm. Thanksgiving. It was like all the holidays. So it was that was kind of a sequel to <laughs> Trick or Treat in a way because I, I, they've been again they've been talking about making the sequel and it's never gonna happen. Have you read the comic? There's like, it's called. I do have it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I figured that's what the movie would be. Yeah, I figured that's what it would be too. It's been a while. I think I, I read it when it came out. It's, I, I don't really remember too much about it. Um, I get that comic and the uh, the John Carpenter tale of, Tales of Halloween confused sometimes, the two uh, books. But yeah, I, I just love how, like, they made that comic, those bumpers, you know, the, the, the short film that existed before Trick or Treat all this merch and we still haven't gotten a sequel but again i think a sequel would kind of just I don't fuck, think it it, needs it. fuck it up yeah it would mess it up but yeah I, I i agree it's it's it was a cool it was just a cool character to 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 create and and he's kind of childish in a way and and trick-or-treat in general that movie gives off that like kid-friendly vibe even though it's not Right. And that's just kind of what I always, always like loved about the character besides his appearance, which, you know, which is the main reason we're talking about him because he's a fucking jack-o'-lantern. And, and I, and I, and I want to go back around now and talk about how we all basically picked a character that's a jack-o'-lantern. That's iconic With to feet. us. Because I'm, that's because evil. I, that's evil. Yeah, that's, that's basically the spirit <laughs> of Halloween with a pumpkin head, you know? And, and I'm sure there's people that are, like, subjective. They're probably going to be like, oh, Jacko is not iconic. But I agree. He is. He, he's iconic. He's, I don't agree with them. I think he 100%. is an iconic. 100%. <laughs> he is an iconic. For that VHS cover alone, he's iconic. Because <laughs> I'm sure if you ask any horror fan that's, like, around our age, Dude, like, they'll remember that fucking cover. It's so. a sought-after tape, too. The Jacko I VHS is a sought-after tape. Yeah, and and... And obviously, Sam and Sam Hain both are like ridiculously iconic. Like any any by like Jacko is a deep cut, which is good. We needed the deep, we needed a deep cut on the list. Absolutely. <laughs> and then Sam Hain's like in the middle, and then you've got like Sam, which I think like everyone fucking knows at this point. Everyone knows Sam, you know. So with all the fucking merch he has, but I just like how these characters are just the embodiment of Halloween. Like they're the reason Halloween exists and the reason, you know, and they all have their own agenda. You know, one of them wants to make Halloween last forever. One of them doesn't want you to break the rules. And the other one just wants to slaughter people on Halloween because he's a fucking weird wizard thing. (laughs) 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 Right. (laughs) It was brought back by some teenagers. So I just love how they all have their, they all have their agenda. They have some sort of revenge or, or something they're trying to do. 
in the name of Halloween. And that's fucking awesome. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! So going back to what Dave was asking, who would win? We're gonna make we're gonna make we're gonna make this we're gonna call it right now. So we've got Sam, we've got Sam Hain, and we've got Jacko in a in a in an ECW ring. Not WWE, okay. fuck that. <laughs> they're in, they're in an ECW fine. ring. <laughs> Alright. So let let's 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 go really quick through each one each one of their powers. So Sam Hain first. He's a ghost, right? I guess you guys would agree. I mean, with me, right? yeah, he He's can stop a, a, time. He can stop time. What else can he do? He can um, he can have all the ghosts in the can, fucking world. He can control he them. He can corral ghosts. Yes, he he can summon them and, and, and monsters. And there is there is followers. All right, so that's his power. Does he have any other powers, Adam? That I'm missing? No, right? A uh, raspy basic. voice. A raspy. Smoker's voice. <laughs> his Marlboro, his Marlboro voice. All right, so that's those are his features. Now Jacko is a weird fucking wizard, evil cult. son of a bitch, evil, evil son of a bitch with a <laughs> scythe. Right, it's a scythe or a sickle or and, whatever. And from what I understand, Jacko can only be killed by a member of the Kelly family. So if there's nobody in so, the Kelly family around, we're all fucked. Jacko ain't dying. <laughs> Argument we're all over. Fucked. And and again, he's he's pretty violent the way he kills. Look, he's he's so evil. He made a woman kill herself. So yep. <laughs> by accident. With um, a toaster. With a toaster. <laughs> So, and then we have Sam, who I guess is sort of immortal because he gets shot with a fucking shotgun and doesn't die. He 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 loses a limb his, and is able and to moves. reattach it. Right. Yeah. He comes and goes. He's very small and and and, and can hide. Uh, what else can Sam do? He still stabs the shit out of people. This is a tough call, man. Honestly, right, you know Sam what? Hain. Sam Hain probably, since he wanted to, he wanted he wanted to destroy the world or New Wait. York at least, which I don't blame him. But <laughs> I'm yes. calling a count out. I'm calling a count out. Okay, they're gonna knock What's each other out of the ring. It's gonna be a count out. Nobody wins. <laughs> what's gonna What's gonna happen is Sam Hain is gonna control Jacko. And Sam. Okay. okay. Right? He's going to be like... Jacko's ah, just going to go ah, kill everybody. Jacko's going to go gonna, into the crowd and incite no. everybody in the stomach. He's going to do some Freddy versus Jason shit to Jacko and Sam. Control them, right? And then... Right. Then Jacko's going to try to cut... You know, he'll cut, Sam, he'll cut Sam in half. But obviously Sam can reattach himself because he's a pumpkin. Right. And then Sam Haynes going to be like, fuck, <laughs> this didn't do anything yeah. for me. Then what's going to happen is Jacko is going to make Sam Hain kill himself with a toaster. <laughs> All right, this is getting Bad ridiculous. Noise. I like this. He's I like gonna, this. He's gonna make. He's gonna make Sam Hain. Sam Hain's gonna be like, "Oh, I got the upper hand. I made him. I made him cut Sam in half." But Sam's not reattaching really himself. Shit, this isn't gonna work. Then Jacko's <laughs> gonna go. He's gonna make. Uh, Jacko's gonna make Sam Hain. You know, do something but to himself by accident that involves a, to- a toaster for, in some way. I don't, I don't know. And they're all going to be fucked. I think at the end, and then Jack is going to stand there confused because honestly, that's what he looks like in most of the movie. He looks fucking confused <laughs> in every scene. He's in Jacko. <laughs> so I think, I think it's a draw. I don't think that's anyone's okay. winning. <laughs> that's well thought out. If anything, yeah. the toast, the toaster one. That the <laughs> toaster one. <laughs> the, the random you know, cut, toaster. Cutting your cutting your toast in, in little slivers is this is weird. What about French but, toast sticks, I, Dave? I mean, I'm, I'm I'm up for trying it. I that's why you know what? As soon as I said it, I thought of French toast sticks, and I was like, all right, maybe that's not so. Weird. So okay. Mm-hmm. Was it, it breakfast time? No, <laughs> it's at night. Breakfast. That whole seeds at night. No, there no. Breakfast go. or dinner is always always an option. <laughs> If there's one thing you learn in this episode, is to just beware of that toaster in your kitchen. Shit's and no Brenner. joke. Grinner is fucking good. 
I'm glad to be part of an episode. I'm glad to be part of an episode where that's the moral at the end. Brinner yeah. is good. Brinner is good. <laughs> watch watch out for toasters and Brinner is good. That, that that's what you need to take from this episode. That went of the full circle. Podcast. Exactly. Hell yeah. That's what we do here. That's what we do. Hi there, Howard here, and I'm back to give a spooky shout out to this month's patrons. Big thanks to Arachnid Andrew R, Bloodsucker Bryant New, and new this month, Scary Sam Fran and Jacko James F. If you would like a spooky shout out on the show, be sure to join our Patreon. We currently have exclusive episodes of the podcast, articles, and plenty more Halloween goodness to come. You won't regret it. I'll catch you guys later. All right, Adam, thank you so much again for joining us a second time. It was a pleasure. Always happy to be on. Great to do it a second time. And uh, thanks so much again. You can find The Great Pumpkin Project at Great Pumpkin Project on Instagram, as well as the thegreatpumpkinproject.com, where you can print yourself some tags, put them on some pumpkins, and hopefully put out 31 of them, like Tommy All Valley <laughs> Tournament. And um, <laughs> Instagram likes, yeah, Instagram likes are nice, but get out there, participate, s- spread the spirit of the holiday. Just do it. Definitely carve 31 pumpkins. Tommy Valley's doing it. <laughs> and be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Haunted Hangover. And check out our Patreon page, patreon.com backslash Haunted Hangover 31. And if you can rate and review us, that would be greatly appreciated. And remember, the best cure for a hangover is more. More Brinner. Brinner. <laughs> Later, guys. Later, guys.